Right now at 11 o'clock, we have our eye on a storm that is pounding the Jersey Shore. This is Stone Harbor, where rain and wind have conspired with high tide to leave streets flooded. In nearby Cape May Courthouse, the driving winds drove right through this car dealership, knocking a sign right off its post. And look at live Mega Doppler 3. Hours after this storm arrived, it is far from over. We're bracing for a nasty night with lots more wind and rain. Good evening, I'm Chris May. And I'm Susan Barnett. This storm has been pretty miserable, especially for the thousands of people who are still without power tonight. Right now, AC Electric reports more than 21,000 outages. Del Marva says it is working on just under 1,600 outages. Both Pico and PSE and G say outages are scattered tonight. I would news all over this storm for you. Team 3 coverage with meteorologist Kathy Orr in just a moment. But first, to hard hit Stone Harbor and Eyewitness News reporter Natasha Brown. Natasha. Well, good evening to you, Chris and Susan. We are here along Stone Harbor Boulevard, and as you can see here behind me, it is still closed at this hour. It's been closed for hours now since earlier today. Fierce, fierce wind gusts actually toppled trees and power lines. The wind gusts have subsided, we're happy to say, but now coastal flooding is the new concern. Strong coastal storm will affect Stone, Stone Harbor emergency management officials are urging residents to heed the radio warnings about the coastal storm bearing down on the island. Please prepare your property for storm conditions and move vehicles to higher ground. Flooding can already be seen along some of the main streets through town, and Stone Harbor's fire department has already dealt with the destructive force of powerful wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour. We had a roof that uh, blew off in the Sand Lane condominiums, which is at 96 in the beach, and we also had about uh, 12 telephone poles on our boulevard blow down with the storm. Getting out. The, the poles are right in front of our house. The ones you see are just the first set. The second set is down by my house, so I, I can't do anything there. Police closed off Stone Harbor Boulevard after several power poles were toppled. This one still teeters on dangling wires. Trees were tossed onto the roadway, no match for Mother Nature's powerful force, and officials worry the next high tide may mean the worst is yet to come. We're concerned about the 3.30 a.m. tide cycle, which should, should be a lot higher than this one. So that, that's why we're here uh, standing by. Longtime resident Paul Hughes knows the drill. We move the cars to higher ground uh, around the corner. Um, uh, just try to stay indoors and uh, hunker down. Sandbags in town sit at the ready as folks here watch and wait for the water to rise. Well, at this hour, we can tell you we're seeing a bit of a change in the weather. For the last uh, couple of hours or so, we're seeing this rain-snow mix that is falling right now. Again, high tide is the big concern in terms of coastal flooding. It's expected around 3.30 a.m. or so, so crews are certainly watching and waiting to see how the 800 or so permanent residents of this resort town may be affected by flooding. We're live here in Stone Harbor, New Jersey. Natasha Brown, CBS3 Eyewitness News. Oh, all right, Natasha. Thanks so much. A similar situation is unfolding tonight in Brigantine. The winds are strong, surf there, and a not welcome in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. Eyewitness News reporter Oren Lieberman continues our live Eye on the Storm coverage tonight. Oren. Susan, the precipitation seems to have slacked off a little bit. A lot of the wind coming off the bay is driving some of the water off the bay and whipping it across the street here. The big concern now flooding in the next high tide. The biggest problem along the ocean in Brigantine was the wind. Gusts lashed the beach, blowing sand and spray down the shore. At high tide, the surf was crawling up the beach, reminiscent of another storm that came through four months ago that this town still remembers. I don't think this is that bad, but I mean, the ocean is definitely, uh, hopefully doesn't get it as bad as Sandy. Along the back bay, the problem wasn't the wind, it was the water. Bay waters flooded streets like East Shore Road. In places, the water was four or five inches deep, enough to convince the city's public works department to close the roads that are too close to the bay. Even away from the beach, the homes weren't immune to the wind. Powerful afternoon gusts knocked roof tiles off of homes and kicked over storage containers. Before this storm is over, there is one more cycle of high tides that has homeowners here worried. I hope it doesn't come up any higher than this, I guess. I hope the next one's not any worse. Winter is nearing an end, but the season won't go quietly bringing at least one more storm to the shore. This wasn't nearly as bad as Sandy in Brigantine, but it's bad enough in a city that's still rebuilding.
flood waters have receded since the last high tide. We are now four hours to the next high tide and counting. Live in Brigantine, Orton Lieberman, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Orrin, hang on there. Thank you very much. Wow. We're in the Weather Center now with Kathy. You've been tracking this for a few days, and look at that. That's unbelievable. It is unbelievable, and many times our spring and summer storms, our nor'easters, our coastal storms are just as impactful as tropical storms, and we're seeing that tonight. Right. The wind, the huge story. Let's take a look at Live Mega Doppler 3. We'll show you what we have in store here. More rain, more wind right into the early morning hours. You see that pink. That's a mixture of rain and snow. Some of our surface temperatures still above freezing, but that precipitation is being pulled down. It's pulling down that cold air, transitioning some of the precipitation over to snow. A slushy accumulation on grass is possible, but really it's not the big story of the night. That will be the wind and of course the coastal flooding. Coastal flood warning goes through 8 o'clock in the morning for moderate to major coastal flooding. You heard Orrin and Natasha talking about it. Here are the high tides. Rehoboth Beach, 334 in the morning. Cape May, close to 4 a.m. 323 for Wildwood, 351 a.m. at Strathmere and Atlantic City at 320. So the couple hours ahead of this and behind these times, we will see that potential for moderate to major flooding. High wind warning continues through early tomorrow morning for gusts down the shore to 60 miles an hour, inland gusts to 50 miles an hour. That's not going to let up as well. The high wind warning will continue overnight. Down branches and wires, definitely a possibility. And I do anticipate additional power outages, especially down the shore for our Delaware beaches and even inland Delaware and South Jersey. For more on those wind gusts, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Justin Drabuck. He is monitoring the situation from the CBS3 Mobile Le Weather Lab. And Justin's live in Cherry Hill. Justin, how's it going there? Well, Kathy, it looks like we got that changeover now. So snow lovers, if you're in the Cherry Hill area, just look out your window, seeing the flakes flying right now. Winds continue to howl, though, more northerly now, which has actually dropped the temperatures. We're holding at about 37 degrees. That's why we're able to see that changeover. Route 70, though, here in Cherry Hill is moving good, but I want to show you the uh, one of the light posts here. You can see some of those flakes mixing in. Maybe there's still a little bit of a rain uh, mix in as well, but we're seeing a lot more snow within the last 15 minutes of those. It's the uh, big fat wet snowflakes. There you go. Nice shot there. You can see the flakes flying in the wind. Now let's talk about the wind gusts we had uh, today. A lot of these gusts, uh, the highest gust occurs earlier today, so it's coming. They're dying down a little bit, but Cape May coming in 65 mile per hour. Ocean City 61, Wildwood 54, Atlantic City Airport 51. Even in Philadelphia, got in the action with a 50 mile per hour wind gust. Back here live with the CBS3 Mobile Weather Lab show you a satellite image of the moisture in the air. Darker colors, the heavier moisture beginning to move offshore. So there will be improvement later on tonight. But there you go, 36.5 degrees. We got snow here in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That's the latest here live. We'll send it back to the studio. All right, Justin, thank you very much. We'll take a look at a tree that was no match for the strong winds that whipped through Cheltenham Township. Uh, this tree fell onto a home in the 100 block of U Road and badly damaged that house. But the good news is no one there was hurt. Now we turn to Chester County. People in Kennett Square had to contend with the gusty winds and some rain as well. Uh, we talked with people who said they're ready for a spring warm up. They've had enough of winter, but they were thankful we haven't had major snowfalls this season. Many of you have sent us pictures of the storm damage, so take a look at this scene in Stone Harbor. This eyewitness cam photo was sent to us by Chris Collette. Sections of Stone Harbor have been dealing with street flooding all day long. James in Northfield, Atlantic County, sent us this photo. High winds have led to a lot of downed trees there, and many will no doubt have a cleanup on their hands in the coming days. Keep your pictures coming. Upload your storm photos and video to the eyewitness cam at cbsphilly.com slash share. You might just see them right here on Eyewitness News and Eyewitness News will be up very early tomorrow morning to bring you extended eye on the storm coverage. Join us starting at 4 a.m. for the updated forecast as well as the latest school closings and delays. Well, the couple is charged in yesterday's wild ride in stolen police cruisers. It stunned everybody but this guy. It doesn't shock me. It doesn't shock me. It makes me feel bad for them and like sad that it would come to this. Well, the former friend says he's not surprised this happened, and now he's telling us why in an Eyewitness News exclusive. Developing right now a local twist in a story getting international attention. A driver accused of killing a young couple on their way to deliver their first child turns himself in in our area. Kathy. Winds will continue to gust toward 60 miles an hour down the shore, and they will linger into tomorrow morning. We'll track the changeover to snow as well coming up with the 7 day. He said, you know, the flight crew is not comfortable with you on this flight. And 
I was shocked. Well, first he was shocked, then he was kicked off the plane. What this Philadelphia student did to be kicked off his flight and why it could happen to anybody. CBS3 Mobile Weather Lab, sponsored by Audi. Back now on Eyewitness News, this storm brought snow to the Washington, D.C. area. You can see it here as we look at the White House. D.C. public schools were closed ahead of the storm. So what else does this system have in store for us? Kathy's updated forecast is just five minutes away. Well, developing news right now, the search for a suspect in a hit and run crash that killed a pregnant woman and her husband in New York is over. Julio Acevedo surrendered to police in Bethlehem, PA tonight. Authorities say that Acevedo slammed into a cab carrying that couple on Sunday and then left the scene. Police took him into custody at a Turkey Hill Mini Mart on Route 68. The couple's baby was delivered by C-section after that crash, but later died. There are major new developments tonight surrounding this couple's wild ride in st involving two stolen police cruisers. The couple was arraigned in Philadelphia, and tonight we are hearing exclusively from the former roommate of the female suspect, Shana Sykes. He spoke only to Eyewitness News reporter Ben Simino. I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. Like, like Blake was a good guy, but once he met her, like he, that was his ultimate downfall. The wild police chase Tuesday that spanned two states and included two stolen police cars got more serious for the couple who authorities say is responsible. 24 year old Blake Bills and 23 year old Shayna Sykes were criminally charged in New Jersey on Wednesday. Camden authorities charged Bills with attempted murder, also carjacking and aggravated assault for allegedly hitting a Camden police officer with his cruiser. The couple already faced several serious charges for the chase in Philadelphia, where Sykes nearly struck a pedestrian with a stolen Philadelphia police car and heavily damaged several vehicles. I mean, back then I, I knew they were uh, they were d dabbling in drugs. Rob Canelli lived with Shayna Sykes in Northern Liberties and says there were signs she was troubled two years ago. She refused to pay months worth of rent, forcing their eviction because she owed five grand. She stopped paying rent. She said that uh, it was rude of us to uh, to make her pay after uh, all that we've that she's done for us, which was nothing. We also learned more about the couple Wednesday. They are engaged with a seven month old daughter, but police say they are known heroin abusers. They left the McCungie home they share with Sykes grandmother on Friday. Camden officials believe they were involved in a brief chase by police in Camden on Sunday. The couples believed to have stolen a civilian car in Philadelphia on Monday and tried to carjack another vehicle Tuesday morning in Camden before stealing the first police car. Do they look like the same people? No. They, they not not the people I knew. Both Sykes and Bills were formally arranged in Philadelphia on Wednesday. He's being held on $300,000 bail. She's being held on $700,000 bail. In Northern Liberties, I'm Ben Simino, CBS3 Eyewitness News. The Catholic Cardinals impose a media blackout as they try to determine a start date for the conclave to elect a new pope. The Cardinals today prayed for guidance inside St. Peter's Basilica. They were waiting for one remaining cardinal to arrive before setting a start date for that conclave. Workers are busy inside the Sistine Chapel. They're turning it into a polling site. They also installed the two stoves used to burn the secret ballots after each round of voting. Stay with Eyewitness News throughout the entire process of electing a new pope. I will be reporting live from Vatican City as the papal conclave gets underway. Well, the U.S. Capitol is open late tonight. Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky is filibustering the nomination of John Brennan to be director of the CIA. Paul has held the floor for more than 11 hours now, and he has spent nearly all of his time criticizing the Obama administration for not ruling out the possibility of using drone strikes on American citizens inside this country. A filibuster prevents the Senate from voting by allowing senators to discuss a bill indefinitely. The longest on record went for more than 24 hours. Well, a Philadelphia student is kicked off a plane for snapping a picture of his travel blog. So here's a look at that photo. Matthew Clint took it on a United flight from Newark to Istanbul last month. Clint says that he was told by the flight attendant the photo violated United policy. That policy does appear in small print in the airline's in-flight magazine. Clint put his iPhone away and tried to explain, but he was suddenly escorted off the plane. The captain is, is quite rude and he says, 
essentially, I don't want to hear you, get off the plane before I call the police. It was quite embarrassing just grabbing my bag and just making that walk forward with all eyes on me. United did not give an explanation as to why he was removed from the plane. Clint says he's speaking out to make sure that this doesn't happen to any other passenger. The changeover to snow is happening in South Jersey. We saw Justin a little bit earlier in Camden County and looking at some big chunky snowflakes with temperatures right around freezing. On Live Mega Doppler 3, you can see it pretty clearly. All of a sudden, it's turned from pink to white, from a mix to some snow, especially through Burlington County and Ocean County, New Jersey, where we do have an advisory still in effect for a slushy coating to a couple inches possible on grassy surfaces. So our Pennsylvania suburbs, unfortunately, you are out of the storm if you're a snow lover. But right now, that cold air finally penetrating and getting in to the South Jersey area. If we zoom in, you can see Pemberton, even Bordentown, Bristol on the Pennsylvania side looking pretty good here. Looking at Hamilton, even Egg Harbor City seeing some snow showers and we'll continue to see this into the early morning hours. Winds gusting to 33 miles an hour in Philadelphia, 23 in Allentown, 26 at Rio Grande in Wildwood, but our immediate shore areas are seeing still winds gusting to at least 50 miles an hour. Philadelphia, it's 37, Millville, 38, Trenton, 35, seeing some snow with heavier precipitation really pulling down that cold air and Wildwood, 36 and in Reading, it is still a mild 39 degrees. For your Thursday, we'll see maybe a few early morning snow showers through South Jersey. Otherwise, temperatures will be in the 40s. Winds will be gusty to 30 miles an hour in the afternoon. And then late Thursday into early Friday, there's a chance of a morning snow shower. The afternoon, just mostly cloudy skies and still some breezy conditions. It won't be until Saturday that things really begin to change. Fair weather high pressure takes over and temperatures will be back in the 50s, feeling a little bit more like spring. Incidentally, daylight saving time begins Sunday morning. Overnight, you'll see that rain changing over to a wet snow in South Jersey. A slushy coating to an inch or two is possible, but only on the grass. It will be very windy. Winds gusting to 45 miles an hour still at times during the overnight. Lows between 27 in our coldest suburbs to 32 degrees in Center City. For your Thursday, skies will be mostly cloudy. It will be chilly and windy with temperatures in the lower 40s, which is well below average for this time of year. Winds gusting to 30 even during the afternoon. And on the exclusive of eyewitness weather five day forecast by Friday. There is a chance of a morning snow shower. Then it will just be mostly cloudy with temperatures that will slowly rise into the 40s. Saturday, all of a sudden it feels like spring with sunshine temperatures in the 50s. Daylight saving time begins Sunday and also we have our Philadelphia St. Patrick's Day Parade. You can see it right here live on CBS 3. It will be 57. What a gorgeous day and then Tuesday transition day to cooler weather on Wednesday with a high temperature of 44 degrees. Be sure to wake up with eyewitness news in the morning. We'll be up extra early starting at 4 a.m. with an updated forecast as well as the latest potential school closings or delays. And we'll take a look down the shore where we do anticipate some moderate to possibly major additional coastal flooding and continued problems with the wind. Yeah, lots of power outages. That wind is wicked, mm. especially down there. Thanks, Kathy. Well, these are supposed to be exhibition games down in Florida. No, no, supposed they, to be. Uh, you know, it's the Washington Nationals and the Phillies. So yep. the rivalry renewed. It got a little nasty. I'll show that to you. And Villanova with a incredible effort against a team that's won 11 in a row, the Georgetown Hoyas. Show you that as well, coming up. Villanova tried to roll off the bubble tonight with a win over the fifth-ranked Hoyas. Georgetown entered the game winners of 11 in a row. Here we go. Nova plan like the NCAA tournament committee was in the house. That's an alley-oop from Archie Diacono to James Bell. And we know that Ryan can distribute as well as shoot. He drains a three on this one. That's a part of his 11-point night. Now let's go to the second half where Javon Pinkston will hit a three-pointer. He led all scorers with 20. Villanova with an impressive upset victory over Georgetown, 67 to 57. All right, LaSalle taking on George Washington, and it was a good night for Ramon Galloway. He hits three here. He had 29 points. Then Tariq Duran steps up and hits a three. He had 19. The Explorers clinch a first round by in the A-10 tournament with the 84 to 70 
final. Sixers on the road in Atlanta with a 10 game losing streak away from home and the stat held true against the Hawks. Here's the kind of night it was for the Sixers. Deshaun Stevenson hefts up a three pointer hits all iron and drops back down. All right, the Sixers with the B squad in. Coach trying to figure out what he's got on the bench. Damian Wilkins took advantage. Uh, his uncle Dominique looking on with pride. He scored 20 points. But the Sixers on back to back nights could not hang with the Hawks. End of the third quarter, Jeff Teague with a three of his own. Game high 27. Sixers lost it 107 to 96. Doc Holliday looks like he's ready to start the season. Four scoreless innings of work with a couple of strikeouts. Now, the Nationals phenom, Steven Strasburg, not as sharp. Here, he hits Chase Utley in the leg, so the bad blood is renewed. So, Doc delivered an old-school response the next time up. He sailed the pitch behind Tyler Moore. The teams remained under control, though. They remained under control. The Phillies won the game 6-3. Here's Doc explaining the pitch behind Moore. We've had a lot of guys hit over the years and and I think as a staff we we need to you know do a good job of, of protecting those guys but um, spring training I, I don't think you're necessarily trying to do it but uh, you know it wouldn't have been the worst thing had it got him you know after getting our <laughs> one of our good guys oh, well, see, that's the intimidation oh and yeah the doc it's part of the game it's right? good he's the man to that's base well. ready right there yes it throw does. it well Thanks a lot, Beasley. So we come here, a supermarket rescue. He kept moving, so I hip tossed him down to the ground. He got back up, and I hip tossed him again. That's the kind of guy you want on your side. A good Samaritan rushes to help a woman attacked outside a grocery store. Now he's talking only to Eyewitness News. Well, a quick reminder to join the Eyewitness News team this weekend for the Philadelphia St. Patrick's Day Parade. CBS3 and the CW Philly are proud to be sponsors once again this year. Join Kathy and me this Sunday starting at 1 p.m. right here on CBS3. It's going to be a great one. Well, a dramatic foot chase isn't what Gerald Smith of Merchantville, New Jersey, expected on his trip to the supermarket. But that's just what happened, and only Eyewitness News has his heroics. This former high school wrestler jumped into action, helping a woman who had been the victim of a purse snatching. It happened outside the Cherry Hill Pathmark Sunday night. Smith saw it. He ran after the guy, and here's what he did. Well, I got out of my truck and ran, and I jumped up here. After him. I went with him into the fence and we were back here and then I, he kept moving. So I hip tossed him down to the ground. He got back up and I hip tossed him again. I had him down with my knee and I called police. And then he hip tossed him again. Yes. <laughs> this is the suspect, David Zane of Westville, who was hip tossed. He's now being held on $10,000 bail. We'll be right back. Well, thank you for watching CBS 3 Eyewitness News at 11. We're back uh, especially early in the morning at 4 o'clock. For Beasley, Kathy, and everyone here, I'm Chris May. And I'm Susan Barnett. The Late Show with David Letterman is next tonight. His guest is Melissa McCarthy from Mike and Molly right here on CBS 3. Have a good night. We'll see you again tomorrow.